Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. So let's talk about less contentious. Yeah. Well, maybe some yeah. people would find it. No more floor it. area ratios. There we yeah. go. Um, let's talk a little bit about Central Square. Yes. All right, so we went on a walking tour Mm -hmm. This past, when was it? Thursday? Uh, Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday, From right? We, five we did the, uh, well, seven. I did the double header. I was going to try and do double the triple header, header yeah. and get to Patty's lunch, but it didn't uh, happen. Yeah. So we did, it was a, 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 a mural walk through Potential Central Potential mural square. walk, uh, right. Well, we went Simple. by some existing murals, right. but also some, there are some big plans for yeah, some, which, who knew? some new murals. Sponsored uh, by the Central Square Business Association, yes. It's basically coordinated by Central no, Square Business Association. No, but I mean, this walk in particular was... Well, Michael Monestein. Yeah, he led the walk. Right, yeah. but the thing is, he's sort of starting to morph into a role of a, yeah. of a potential mm. person associated with a business improvement district, which doesn't oh, right. exist, but, but that's maybe not, one it's day on the will. Table at it's on the point. table for yeah. discussion, so... So what's, I think it's fair to say that what, you saw, uh, what we saw was kind of a collaboration of property owners. Yes, that's um, true. Michael Monestein and the Central Square Business Association. Right. And uh, Jason city. Weeks and the oh, Cambridge oh, Arts right. Council. Which is the city. So right. it's a nice combo because you do need to have cooperation. The, exactly. With the, the property exactly. owners. So the big idea, was yeah. to sort of cut to the chase, yes. not bury the lead, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is that the um, there is a there is a proposal, active proposal, to put up, I believe, ten murals ten, right. uh, around the Greater Central Square area, uh, and uh, in a couple of locations in places where there's something there currently, yeah, but right. primarily fresh sites which don't have right. anything right now. So. Um, and, you know, there are some things to talk about about this, to be mm -hmm. sure. I, it was a pretty good crowd of people yeah, uh, that came along the people, walk. I think, yeah. You know, uh, um, so, um, but anyway, so let's just dive yeah, go, right go in go here. to some we'll photos. Sort of walk through the photos right. here. Okay. So, so here's we, Michael. Right. Okay. So we assembled Monastery. at Lafayette Square. Right. And, uh, we, oh, and by the way, I did learn that the old, uh, the, the building that had had the marker for Lafayette Square yeah. Uh, they did get knocked down as part of Mass in Maine. Oh. Is actually the facade is going to be recreated and the insignia, the, 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 oh. the plaque that said Galapagos Square is going to be put right See, back I, there. See, I, I didn't even so, know about that. You so. know, chalk one up for historic preservation. Oh, wow. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah. wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah Mass in Maine is definitely, it's definitely about, happening about right now. seven floors up, yeah. six and a half floors of steel up now. Yeah, amazing. So here's Michael Monastery, okay. who was uh, yep. uh, giving basically the the... The circus barker here, yeah. you know, instead of telling what was up, mm -hmm. right? Actually, by the way, there's a little bit of sculpture behind him. It was actually a piece by Adam Simha. This one, the orange. Uh, yeah, it's is that a, steel? sort of a chimey yeah. one. Not oh, my right. favorite. I think it yeah. breaks down a little too much. Okay. Okay. So Michael was explaining about mm -hmm. the fact that we were going to take some sites, mm -hmm. some very prominent sites, and and have them become new murals. Mm -hmm. Now we see here on the right yep. is the side of the Wilg building. Women's Wilk? Independent Living Group, oh. which is a Didn't women's uh, part of MIT. Type, like part, it's part of MIT. I think it's independently yeah. owned. So this is the street that's uh, right it's next right to where Lafayette. the old gas station used to be. Right. And this right. is Mass Ave over yeah, here. Yeah, sort okay. of like you might call it like the Sydney mm -hmm. Street Extension. Right, right, facing, right. Going toward Tuscany. So this is a side view. And is that's, it, and that's the, one wow. of the faces that is it gonna Is it going to go all the way up? Um, we don't know yet. The That's thing pretty is they're, they're basically yeah. interviewing artists, potential artists. Uh -huh. They're talking about the possibilities of what might wow. go up. And there yeah. you go. Now, if we scroll down a little bit here, like right, right across on the other side of Lafayette Square, what you see in the background is actually Patrick Barrett's building. The, um, the old Toscaninis was in right, there. Right. It's now currently being remade mm -hmm. into a boutique hotel, but the mm -hmm. businesses will be returning. Actually, I heard... Latest I heard is Tuscanini should be expected back in the fall. Oh. Uh, that may be optimistic, but right. I'm going to try and hold everybody okay. to their word on that. They are moving along. Um, yeah, so, so this is the space that we saw <clears throat> that day. Yes, so that's looking directly at the right. building from Lafayette and Square. This is all temporary, this mural, because it's just right, a while the construction. Is, right, this is the one that would be just completely temporary. 
Right. Um, now, and a then, couple days later, yeah, like actually this. this was yesterday, yes. I was down there, and in fact, yep. over directly in front of Tuscanini's, right. they've got like yeah, some I ice, saw them doing ice cream it, actually. Characters. I think it was on um, Saturday <laughs> right. I saw them doing it. So it's it. kind yeah. of festive, yeah, pretty nice very use of nice. colors, but it's it's, yeah. it's, it's sort of doing double duty of, sort yep. of putting a little life on there, but right. also sending the message that, in fact, yes. Tuscanini's will be He's back. coming back. So that's a pretty good thing to do. Now, if you scroll down a little bit more, we walked up the street to the corner of Mass Ave and yeah. Norfolk. Uh, the old Blockbuster building. It was a Blockbuster, yeah. and it was out Everything. of blue, and yeah, et cetera. all kinds of things. So it's, you know, kind of the facade of the building mm -hmm. is in pretty sad shape. I will yep. be getting a new tenant soon. Um, if all goes well, it'll be Revolutionary Clinics, which will be a medical marijuana right in Central dispensary, Square? which oh will goodness. eventually, Oops. actually the Central Square Advisory Committee is having a, a large project review about that one next week. Mm. Um, but anyway, if you look over there, what you see is this sort of this just badger right. set right at the corner. And then off to the right, there you see an existing mural, right, which has been around there for a good long while. And apparently, the person who was they contacted the artist, right? Right, and they were okay saying it's basically it's, right. it's it had, had to its be day, anyway. and, yeah. And so he's it's so agreeable that that one will go away and be replaced by something else. Uh huh. Right. So um, so anyway, so that's another site there right. that where you'll see something brand spanking new. Now, these are not exactly in chronology, chronological sequence yeah. of our walk, but, but I, I sort of put these two together yes. here because they are two extremely mm -hmm. prominent, large yes. building sidewalls. Yes. Uh, the first one on the left is the Sims. You can't uh, miss it. When you're walking up Mass Ave, you can't miss, miss it. it. Right? Yeah. And, you know, coupled with a lot of other kind of vandalism right below of it, Of course, too. you call it 54M5. Or did, MS but, or whatever. It's right, just but a, Michael Monastine basically Sims. was in touch with the person, yeah. and apparently yeah. it's a. But I, I will argue that this is not a Y. <coughs> I'm sorry, it's a four. I know, but and they said, oh, it had to be the roller, know, but you I could know, do diagonals. They so, did it here. But that's that is the site <laughs> that Morris Nagar has given the okay. Yeah, because he owns this whole block. Is that most right? Most of the block, not like, the whole block, but most okay. of the block. So that wall will be redone with some new mural some sort but the, was he ever going to he's allowed to build these buildings up he right? doesn't own but, the, oh he doesn't own those that's right right so, so this mural could be there for a while well this one's going to get covered over no well, this isn't a mural but you know what i mean right whatever the, the is ta being, that put gigantic there is going to be there for a while gonna, okay will okay. most likely be there for a all very right. long while now who now, owns this build this all right is a, so this is yeah. the building here it used to be the old cambridge electric light company building okay it's where when a bank is in there now it's well, just who owns to, this building um i so it's not morris nagar and it's not the people not, who own this no no okay. it's actually it was sold it used to be a fellow named arnold ginsburg and it was okay. sold to a, a some llc or something they're doing they did a lot of restoration work on the front of it yeah um and apparently they're going to allow this side wow. here now everything remember this is private property so sure you can't just sort of exactly you know, have some they have to approve it right they're pre it pretty much has to be agreeable to mm -hmm. the property owners right arts council central Square Business association there'll mm -hmm. probably be some opportunity for well, the arts council are they're gathering the artists are they going to do the selection or? um i don't really know i think okay. it will be sort of done a bit hand in hand with right. property owners so right but they have to draw from a group i think that they're helping the arts council knows who the artists are jason right? weeks and yeah. the arts council are helping facilitate the whole okay. process because they have a lot of connections sure. with people that sure. others might not have that's what i mean Right, so that's a pretty prominent location. Yeah, right? it is. Okay, now, now this is a mural. This is an existing mural on the side the, of uh, the HR building and, right. the, and the pa facing the parking lot. Um, that's staying, yep. right? I put it there for a couple of reasons. One is just to show that we already have murals, but also to point oh, yeah. out that there is there's almost a, sort of a, a I hate to put it this way, but kind of a typical Central Square mural, mm -hmm. which is lots of faces. So is this a David Victor one? I because so. I, I get confused but with I'm this one. Sure. There's also one on Brookline Street, but I right. think this is David. Fitton. But you know, the, the, basically, the the sort of recurring theme mm -hmm. is sort of a diverse faces of people yes. uh, of right. various ages, races, etc., in and around Central Square. And I think this one was maybe repainted. No, it, I could be wrong. It's I a It's not that old a, a mural. No, actually. but it, yeah. Okay. Right. 
But the thing is, is that, you know, and again, it is a point I would like to make about it, which is that we mm. sort of kind of get a bit of a sameness to yes. the murals. Yeah. This is a great mural, but the thing is, is that if you look at other sites, yeah. they kind of have a similar quality. Well, yeah, there's right? a couple others like it, but yeah. yeah. All right. Now, so. now, if you wrap around the corner, go on to Bishop Allen Drive. So this is right looking on the back of the H Mark building, so, facing okay. Green Street. It's just a yeah. big blank wall. This is Bishop Allen Drive. It's where Drive, the deliveries right. are made um, right. for H Mart, or at least some this of the deliveries the other are made here. Looking, whoops, right. That. Yeah. So, um, so that's another wall that's one of the candidates right. here for where there's going to be another mural. As you can see, that's another really substantial one. Yeah, and again, we don't know if it's going to cover the whole thing. We don't know, and, gonna, it, yeah. and it could be because that's a lot. Could be more than one. Right. Right. But the thing right. is, is that it's it's um, it's a big site, mm -hmm. really. Uh, it's not as prominent, it, it, unless you happen to be on Bishop Allen Drive, of course. Right. But it's not as prominent as the Mass Ave ones, you know, but um, but it, but it's prominent in its own way. Yeah. Right? Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see here, this is an existing one here. Again, you know, people and faces and whatever. Yeah, this, this, is, this the, is by the library, right? That's is, that's why I always thought this was the, David Fichter, but it isn't. On the wall of the, the Green right. Street Garage. That's right. Because it does look very and similar to the other one. this one is yeah. actually quite falling apart. It's peeling off and So this be, is this the one that was decommissioned so by the Arts Council? So this is also to be decommissioned. Yes. Right, so which so, means you, it's okay to right. go over. Okay. Now some of us feel that the best thing would be actually to rebuild the whole building because that garage could be better than what it is today. Okay. But, but um, wait a minute, it's the side of this that's going to be painted. Well, actually, too. two the sides. The whole thing, and right? We the only whole... walked along, this is the Pearl Street side. Right, and it's but the Green Street. But if you wrap Street. around on Green Street, right. that will also be getting a mural treatment. Right, but you don't right. have a... Yeah, so right. this is so a lot of... It's a lot of this space. This is a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 really big stuff. Okay. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more here, we have here along Pleasant Street. So there's an existing... Kind of a modest uh, stenciling I job. I missed that this one. Done. Where was I? I missed this one. It's like on the side Where of the Seven Eleven building, pretty close to where the Cantab the is. Same property that the Cantab is in. Oh, okay. Right, but this is facing toward the library. Excuse me, toward the post office. Oh, okay. All right. I just missed uh, that. Right, yeah. but if you wrap around the corner, there's a parking lot that's behind this building. And, oh, right. Here's uh, the post office to yeah, the left. Yeah, so this yeah. is a parking lot that is at the corner, municipal this parking lot. This is in back of 7-Eleven. At the corner of, uh, of Pleasant and Green, Green Street. Green Street. So, and that back wall there is going to get a treatment as well. And they've gotten permission to do that. Apparently so. Wow. Yes. All right. Amazing. Uh, now, again, now we'll just scroll down a little bit more. This is an existing mural, but again, just to kind of show you what exists today, you see the one on the left is the one this that everybody is beautiful. knows. This yeah. is the one on the, on the Middle East. This was the one that was redone recently. <clears throat> it was look definitely, it was refurbished recently. Refurbished, because it's so bright. And it has bright. a lot of familiar faces. I mean, there's Do you Joseph, know people in here? Well, up in the upper left is Joseph and Nabil and his family. It's oh, the, uh, the, I think that's up the, over the, here. The oh, yeah, family. of course. The yeah, right, because oh, that's yeah. their building. Yeah. yeah, there's a woman directly the older woman below, I believe, is actually a, a relative Here? of Glenn Kucher. Oh. All right. Um, but, you know, there was, yeah. you see no, this sort of a nice. representation yeah. of musicians. Everybody yep. loves this one. It's also yeah. interesting because it actually has extensions that go up above the building. Yeah. Edge. So it's really Yeah, I like this. This way. is beautiful. No, yeah. I, it's really, mm -hmm. it's great, actually. Now, down the other end of the street. Oh, this is by the club. Yeah, yeah. by the by what's now Sonia's. Right. Um, this is a science-themed one. Mm. Nocturnal here, which was done as sort of in mm -hmm. conjunction with some of the science interests around the city. So we go down a little bit more. Um, what we have here, here's another site. This one you may not recognize right away, but this is where the Citizens Bank is um, at Temple Street. If you come down Temple, close to where the Vail Court yeah. housing is, this is the back of the. Oh, Citizens that's right, because we Bank walk building. through there, right? And this is just a private parking lot that serves some of the big buildings wow. there. And it's actually, a, it's a church, you, the uh, Unitarian Universalists. Yeah, I didn't even know it. that. So I think they, like they have yeah. some ideas on what they would like mm. back there. So they're working cooperatively to get good. something good like there. Now, again, just a little, little sampler of mm -hmm. what you see, though, right there on the right picture is what, ed on the Edio building, mm -hmm. they did this rather dramatic, highly mm -hmm. geometric, very bright colored um, painting on the wall there. I don't know. So also, this is like the facing, but this also is, it's along the whole building because this right. is going towards. Yeah, it's so, on the other side where so they have the food where, trucks and the beer and all right, that. Right. So this yeah. is looking at it from more or less where um, where Carberry's was right. or Lindell's Bakery was. L right, because now it's Partners now it's Healthcare. Partners or Healthcare, or something. right? Yeah. 
Okay, but just to give you a sense about some of the treatments that could happen. Now, right. one of the things that's a little unknown here is exactly what will happen. Yeah. You know, one of the points I've been making here is that is that all of these other projects sort of happen, you know, one a year, one every few years. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to do going to do ten of them all at once, I as I, I send a message to Jason Weeks and Michael Monastein, basically conveying the, my point of view about this, which was that. I don't want to have like a 2018 time stamp or date stamp on yeah. all of them, have them all represent the same just thing. this one moment yeah. in time. So I've been trying to emphasize the notion about things being a bit timeless. Hmm. You know, something that's just beautiful, and if you look at it 15, 20 years from now, you'll still say, that's great. And it won't just look like, like a snapshot in time. Like the Sitco sign? I don't know. Well, it could be. <laughs> now, now this, below here is completely unrelated, but yeah, I, I'm really. going to throw them up here just because I think there's some ideas in here. So there was a display down along the Rose Kennedy Greenway that I was by recently. Mm. It just showed neon lights from commercial mm. establishments in various places. Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking at that because, you know, if you really want to talk about dressing up Central Square, in addition mm -hmm. to murals, which is basically mm -hmm. paint on wall, I think personally, yeah. we could use a little neon in Central Square. Yeah, but Square. you mentioned anything with lights and I neon. know, I know. There are some people the whole... who get very worked yeah. up about it. But yeah. let's just scroll down a little bit right here. So here's a couple more mm. that were oh, up on the Rose Kennedy Yankee. Greenway. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, really great looking stuff. And then we'll go down a little bit more. Here's one on State Line Potato Chips. But if you look over here on the right, you'll this see. This is all busted up. Yep. You'll see here's actually the remnant of a neon sign. And that place still shoes. exists. It's still it just, up. It's it still in business. It fixed it out. And there it is. It. And you can see the broken neon. Yeah. And it's just sitting there sad as can be for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. So the point I would simply try and make here is that in addition to the murals, wouldn't it be great if we could also yeah. revive a few Maybe other put some, things here. Yeah. Things that would really kind of liven things up at night. Is there some, another sign and the, here? And the very, very bottom one here. This is just a, a, a wonderful neon sign yeah. that was right at the little gathering we had at the end of the walk. Yeah. Uh, I just loved it because it's neon. And uh, and it just says a, a rather nice message, which I think we well, can all learn from. Yeah, but I think it's not the talking; it's textless and doomless. Yeah, maybe right. Be but the thing is, is that there are good things that yeah. people are trying to do now in Central Square, both yeah. with the murals. But I think there's some more we could do. So let's just make stuff happen. And you didn't you know? mention the wonderful goodies we got at uh, at the end of the <clears throat> mural walk. I mean, Roxy's got to hand it out to Roxy's and their nice new food. place whole. Heart provisions. Oh, heart provisions. They provided free yep. food. And um, also thank you. Lamplighter Brewery provided Lamplighter free beer. beer and drink. And, yeah, yeah. Um, it was great. And then IDO, is that how you pronounce it? Opened up their so. space there and they had some monarch butterflies. I didn't do it. And yeah, the Community yeah. Art Center had little projects. No, it was great. So it was, it was great. a wonderful you know, and music. The DJ. DJ was there. That's right. Uh, so and it, it was, was really nice. It was wonderful. Yeah. And then, of course, at the end of it, I rushed off. You I rushed mean, off the whole, in 90 degree I weather to, the to go to. I rushed yeah, off because I was going the, up well, to the so old time Mark baseball McGovern, game. Because he was going to. I saw him there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we went up to the old time baseball game up at St. Peter's. How Field. was that? That was it. Was actually a competitive game. You know, sometimes yeah. it's it was a blowout. Tim Wakefield was one of the celebrities, right? Uh, Tim Wakefield was dressed in a Chicago uniform, and I think he pitched the first inning. You know, which was fun. I actually got there a little late, so yeah, I didn't you see were. him pitching there for that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Lenny Clark was there, you know, local Cambridge-born comedian. Okay. Uh, and he was being Lenny, uh, a little, yeah. a little outrageous. A yeah. Little, little obscene, a little at times. But he actually managed to. Which uh, is not right. That's a family event. I know he was, but yeah, uh, it's <laughs> Lenny Clark. What can you say? Um, but the thing is, is he was out there really pushing like the auction, auctioning off. Some, oh, that's uh, right. They were trying to uniforms, raise you know, mm -hmm. signed by Ray Bork, you know, oh. who was there as well, mm -hmm. and um, and he managed to drive up the price in the auction way high. So he did a good job, good. I have to say. Good. Uh, by the way, there is an interesting little historical footnote I mentioned, in sort of the political context, which is that. You know, the person who puts together the old-time baseball game more than anybody else is Steve Buckley. Yay, Steve Buckley. You know, Boston Herald yes. uh, sports writer. And commentator on <clears throat> one of those. Uh, EI or something, yeah. one of those. Well, all of them. Yeah, yeah. And great guy. And also Cambridge he, born and bred. And does he still live here, though? No, no. no but he so. but he actually grew up right around yeah. in my neighborhood. He's kind of a, around the same <clears throat> age as Jimmy Tingle, or is he a little older? Might be a little um, older. Yeah. Comparable. I think, um, you he know. He might be a little older. I mean, Jimmy... 
Isabel. grew up on Broadway. Steve right. Buckley was right around the corner, about oh, wow. Prospect and Broadway, just oh, around I didn't there. Know it was that close. And up the street in Cleveland Street was uh, where um, uh, uh, Lenny Clark was. So I think it was Cleveland Street. Hmm. Um, but here's an interesting little political tidbit. Okay. Um, both Lenny Clark and Steve Buckley. Yeah. Once upon a time. Yeah were Cambridge political candidates. Whoa. What? Did you know that? I kn I've known that for a long time. When? Because yeah. they're, they're like... In, in 1975... Oh, I just moved to Cambridge. So Lenny Clark know. ran yeah. for Cambridge City Council. Oh, my goodness. And in the same year, Steve Buckley ran for Cambridge School Committee. Wow. And okay. I guess they didn't get it. No, you they know? didn't get it. Uh, you know, the, Interesting. The, uh, I didn't know that. No, that, that, that's the way it was. How and, many votes know, did they get, do you know? About 600 apiece, 600 okay. and change apiece. Was it a serious thing, or was it um, more like... You know, a little bit of both, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I've heard some stories okay. uh, about Lenny in those days yeah. there. Um, but, you know, so anyway, so there do they were. Do people know that he's a stand-up comedian? And He actually he had, a, he had, a, he had a national TV show at the time, too. <laughs> But, um, oh, he did? Yeah, so, so here we have both okay. Lenny and Sorry. Steve both. <laughs> it was right. like the 1975 political reunion mm. in a way. So anyway, it was a great time. Final score, 5-4 visitors. Uh, not that anybody really cares. Because they're made up of all matter. different people. Like oh, yeah, yeah. It's high, all uh, college players. And college did players. Did they have to wear yeah, those right. old uniforms they in that weather? All, all oh, the, God. Yep. Oh, yeah, so you hot. betcha, right? It was a good, sort of good crowd. It wasn't anywhere nearly as many people as we had last year. No, because, because of the weather, I think. Well, mm -hmm. and Pedro mm -hmm. Martinez was the oh, right. featured guest last right. year. And That's right. You know, they were you know go good celebrities that. here this time, mm -hmm. but Pedro is Pedro. He's kind of something special. Yeah. They should right? get Jason Baratek because, you know, he's around. He works for the Red Sox. <clears throat> he lives here. That would be great. I mean, you I knew would, that, right? That he's like a trainer or something. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he is part of the Red. Just oh, Pedro okay. is, is part of the Red Sox. That's yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. No, so we, we next year, him. Steve Buckley, if you're watching this, try to get Jason Barrett. There we go. We do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So actually, I remember some years ago when Oil Can Boyd was the featured oh, uh, right. player. That was great. Wait. And actually, he came wasn't by. Wasn't he a Mets person too? I don't remember if he was or wasn't, but I do okay. know that in some subsequent years. Yeah. He he actually showed up at the game as well. He oh. wasn't like the featured right. celebrity, but, but he, he was. Showed but up. there he was in the stands making rounds mm. with people. How many? Being oil fan, how many great. potential? Uh, well, it wasn't a municipal candidate year, but uh, any any candidates around that night? Um, this year? Yeah. Uh, that you noticed yeah, besides really. Mark or any I mean, city councilors? Or you, you know, I think you might, there, maybe for the state rep uh, seat, you might see a, a person for that. But the thing is, it was, it's really not a venue because those are no. seats that go way outside of Cambridge. It tends to be True. the municipal election years. This That's is sort right. of a, a yeah. must, uh, must see TV right. kind of event must for, for <laughs> candidates. Right. Yeah. So anyway, it was, uh, it was a great time all around. Um, you know, and, I, and you know, the play by play is, uh, is uh, you know who does that? Is Glenn Kucher, oh, right. the the originator of the original one and only Cambridge, Cambridge Inside, Inside Out. Out. Back in eighty eight, right. we are just 89? the sequel. When did uh, it? it ran I, for I, about eleven years, I think. Because it, we didn't get ca American Cable Systems was the first cable company, right? And I think that was so. Yeah, the original Cambridge Inside Out actually yeah. ran for about eleven or twelve years, wow. I believe. That's amazing. Uh, ended around maybe the year two thousand two thousand one, in around there. January. Hmm. Remember, because Glenn sent me a message saying, well, that's all on you, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I said, well, thanks, Glenn. And you started so, it with Susanna when? 2013, so that was many wow, years later. Yeah. But, you know, Cambridge Civic Journal, it, it, at least in some well, you, part, you, tried you, to you, fill you, in a bit you, of that gap. You've been doing the Cambridge Civic Journal for <clears throat> how long? Since 1997. Okay. That's been a while. <laughs> it's a great source. There, there are many. I really, there's a lot years. of sources now. Cambridge Backyard, Cambridge. Uh, yeah, Cambridge yeah. Beer podcast. I think we're still Cambridge. Cambridge Day. is still sort of uh, rediscovered. What is this finding Cambridge thing? That's just a city thing, right? It's a city it, thing. Yeah. Okay. I think I think the sort of the the media quasi media landscape yeah. is still still sort of trying to discover itself. It is, but I do like some of these uh, online presences because they really focus on. Cambridge and not just, I mean, you yeah. have the Chronicle, but let's face it, it's now not yeah. what, what it used to be. Yeah, it's like, they call it, it's like micro-local journalism. Yeah, because they right? use a lot of, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no money in it, really, but that's good. I like For it that any way. Of the, right, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, I think it's still discovering itself. Oh, and Sol Tannenbaum's uh, paper or whatever. 
but that's really an aggregator. So it, he's not I know, but it's still he's taking things yeah. that are from other places. So, like a blog. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just saying, there's a lot out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know really where the future is headed with it, so we'll see. It's uh, what, you know. with yours. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'll just continue yeah. doing yeah. what I do. But the thing is, is that you know, we'll see where the future takes us. You know, it's it's a lot unknown in there. So yeah. let's see. So what else we got going on here? Uh, so I, anyway, the main thing was Central Square, with, you know, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, there was the Envision, and then there was uh, there was one ordinance meeting about the new street uh, storage. Uh, yeah, zoning petition. Storage, and they, zoning petition. And actually tonight they're on the agenda along oh. with the flat roof zoning petition. Oh, right, because I didn't go to that. Um, that was last at week. At the planning too, board, right? but apparently I think the ones oh. for New Street are trying to file for some sort of modification. Yeah. So that may be continued for the meeting tonight. Oh, okay. You know, but anyway, things are sort of happening. Okay. Uh, word on the street is that... Oh, yeah, you can um, talk about... All right, the EMF building, yeah. which has sort of been a, on a hot On 120 Brookline Street. I mean, I, one of the petitioners was trying to convince me to sort of drive hard to the city council, try and influence them to do this or that. I had to sort of say, well, I'm sorry, but what's, I think what's going to happen is that the musicians, artists, so thoroughly trashed the current owner with posters and everything yeah. that, that any notion that you're going to get in protests, I think you're at, gonna, the, at the Mayfair gonna, or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. The notion that any of them are ever going to be invited back in that building mm. is ridiculous at this point. So take that off the table. It okay. ain't happening. But the thing is, is that it is that building as built, mm -hmm. you know, whether it ends up being landmarked or not, the truth oh, is, right. is that you couldn't that build under the current zoning restrictions. You couldn't build a building of that scale on that site now anyway. Really? Even though it's a <clears throat> quasi district? Well, it's still limitations. So the thing is, is it's actually probably economically best to restore the building, make it look like it did back in the 20s, and um, yeah, maybe take down a little piece of it and remodel some of it. But the thing is, is that it most likely have you know office commercial tenants. Does he own the lot next to it? It's a huge lot. No, the city does. Yeah. Wow, that's why the city was right. so well, interested. See, I didn't even honestly, know that. Honestly, the city could the city could try oh. and leverage better outcomes. Well, yeah, because that. they own half that space. Right, but um, so anyway, um, so the the business with the potential landmarking, it's all kind of interesting academically, but I think in the end, it's yeah. it's going to be completely. Well, I could see that a potential pointless. affordable housing with something else there. Um, could have been, could have been, but I don't I think mean, that's what's going to happen now. So, anyway. We'll see you well, next week on Cambridge Inside Out. Okay.